the Fueled by Death guest. So we had a really awesome guest, yes. Melissa Hutchinson. And, uh, you know, I wasn't too familiar with, uh, with. I mean, I never played the game. Right. And I've seen I the commercials that she's been in. But I, I got to say, she was an amazing person to talk to. And I felt like, yeah. you know, everybody vibed really well. And this, this was a really great conversation that we had with her. I love talking with voice actors. I've always wanted to be one. I never pursued it or anything. I just have been, you know, ever since a kid watching cartoons, I always loved being able to pick out you know, voices, you know, of yeah. people. And, and, and I just love, I, I love that whole industry and being able to talk with people like that. That's why we love Brock Powell so yep. much because he's into that industry and um, being able to talk to someone like Melissa, we get that other side of everything. And she's played everything from radio to television to video games. Um, and, you know, little boys old old women you know she she like any like she it seems that she's played every single character animals she was yeah. rudolph the red-nosed reindeer at one point like it's crazy and what a cool conversation and what a cool interview so mugs up this week for our death guest melissa hutchinson cheers the fueled by death guest Let's start off where we like to start off a lot, right in the beginning. Um, <laughs> you are a uh, voice actor by trade, and yes. I'm always curious as to how people started doing the things that they do. So what got you into voice acting? Um, watching cartoons. Yes. Um, no. <laughs> I told you, Mom and Dad. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Cartoons would pay off. Um, you know, I... Uh, it's it's kind of it's I mean literally I joke around about that but it is it's kind of true mm-hmm. um, from since the beginning of time at least my time I always had a knack for doing voices and imitating you know characters on TV and and uh, yeah watching cartoons and yeah. just uh, but then I also wanted you know I you know wanted to be an actress. From a very early age, mm. I, I always wanted to be an actress, and um, I, I, God, this is back when we had to look in the newspaper. I sought out my <laughs> first community theater audition when I was in the, like I don't know, like second or third grade, and my mom drove me, and I got a part in a play, and so I grew up doing community theater. Uh, definitely a, a theater background. Um, I think the moment that the voiceover really dawned on me as like, Oh my God, how awesome of a career would that be? Uh, was when the Simpsons came out and I'm aging myself kids. Cause the Simpsons have been around for a billion years at this point, but when they came out on Tracy Ullman show, the Tracy Ullman show, and I heard Nancy Cartwright doing the voice of Bart Simpson. And that was probably one of the first times where I was like, Oh my God, like, that's this is like this adult woman doing this kid voice and like that's a thing like how cool would that be right um i think everybody was know. always surprised by that and always taken aback by oh my god that this lady she does this popular voice that i've known for years and years and years and i would i would have never guessed right yeah i mean and that's and and you know because she is a grown woman obviously you know <laughs> that voice will be the same forever and ever yeah. if it was young boy it would change um yeah. but you know fast forward many years because after that you know i i just I, I didn't pursue i was young i was only in the eighth grade i think when the simpsons came out but um i later on in my life you know i was kind of just working a job that was kind of sucking my soul dry and i was like dude i this is not going to work for me Um, and I, I pursued, I was like, I need to be acting again. And, uh, I had a friend, honestly, it's kind of, my story is kind of interesting in the fact that I was able to bypass a bunch of hoops, but I had a friend, uh, my best friend's cousin was doing the sprint, like sprint PCS spots on television and whatever. And I was like, Oh my God. Yeah. Duh. Voiceover. Like that's what a great way for me to like, you know, get back into acting and, hopefully, you know, get some animation and, you know, Mm -hmm. and, uh, I actually, uh, my agent in San Francisco, and that's where I got my start. I went to high school with him, Nate Tico, and I just called him up and was like, Hey man, can I come in and talk to you? 
about how to get into this industry and you know he sat me down we chatted for like 30 minutes and he signed me on so that's the the part where i got lucky yeah because most people have to like you know do the classes and and get the demos done and and meet the agent and um uh, see school paid off yeah. <laughs> stay in school kids you never know if you're you know, hanging out with your agent. <laughs> I, I think every uh, good personal decision stems from an awful job. And then, you know, yeah. getting tired of that. And then once once you finally make that move, once you finally make that call and say, hey, we need to sit down and talk, you realize you should have done that a while ago. You know, it's like, yeah, I, man, I didn't know it was going to be this easy. But I sometimes you just have to be forced in that awful corner to 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 break out of your shell a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you, I'm, I should be podcasting for you guys. I'm sure you guys have a similar story. I mean, maybe not. Maybe you've always uh, known, but. Yeah, uh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the jobs that both Dustin and myself do at Death Wish, we never did before. And we got kind of fell into. And then the same thing with podcasting. We got into podcasting um, before we started working with Death Wish Coffee and just as out of the love of podcasts. And then. <laughs> you know, that kind of spiraled into something that we could actually do as part of our job, which is incredible. Yeah. I never thought, I never thought it would be something like that. Like it's, 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 it's neat how, how things can work out in your life as long as you're open to opportunity. Yeah. Oh, totally. And that is absolutely the key. I mean, I talk to people a lot and you know, it's as hokey pokey, hippy dippy as it sounds, I am a, a true believer and proof is in the pudding of, of, manifesting and and having that door open and calling things into your life that uh that that you want and where the direction you want to go and you know if you're open to that it's amazing how things happen i mean you have to put work into it as you guys know it's yeah. not like but it's uh you know it's a powerful thing so i definitely uh, have a lot of gratitude for for where I've come in my career because you know it's um it's a pretty competitive field and yeah uh, yeah we've we've actually talked to actually um uh, we have a voice actor that does uh, our bumps on our podcast. Uh, his name is Brock Powell and uh, he was the voice of the Kool Aid Man for a very long time. Oh and, nice! Uh, and uh, we talked with him a lot about that and it just seems. Like it is a huge pond filled with fish, the voice uh -huh. acting world, you know, and uh, and when you guys are lucky enough to actually land that job, it's it's incredible because of the amount of the amount of stuff that you have to kind of to wade through. And I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about that. If you could talk a little bit sure. about what it's like in an audition process. And I know you've done all sorts of stuff. You've done, you know, voiceover stuff for commercials. You've also done animation, video game work. And, uh, like, so is it, is a voice actor's like audition? Is it pretty much cut and dry in the same, or is it different across the board depending on what you're doing? Um, I mean, there are, there are differences here and there. I mean, um, occasionally and very occasionally there are people who you know want the auditions done in person i mean i've been to voiceover auditions where i'm sitting at a table and there's a mic set up and there's 12 people sitting around you staring at you and you're like well this is awkward yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're not in a booth you're like okay everybody just watch me talk um <laughs> but uh you know for the most part it's uh i mean it's changed just because of where we're at with technology when i first started oh uh, god i've been doing voiceover for like eesh, i think 16 years now yeah uh at that time we were going into the agency and and working with a booth director and you know that's just what you did and uh you know with you know modern technology we started you know the Eventually, we started recording from home, auditions from home. Um, although my LA people actually do like it when you go into audition still. So, yeah. um, but um, the audition process is generally the same. It's and it's kind of like sometimes, sometimes I'll send in an audition and I'm like, oh my god, that was like the crappiest thing I've ever done, and that's the one where you get the call and you're like, oh, okay. Um, but uh, you know, we get uh, a piece of copy generally there's you know direction for what they're looking for sometimes people will send you a whole page of direction and the line is literally like i don't know like 
I can't, I'm trying to think of like a really stupid short line, like, mm-hmm. thanks for calling AT&T, you know what I mean? Right. But it'll be like two pages of our actors, you know, someone who loves nature and <laughs> Earl Grey tea. And you're like, okay, um, <laughs> someone was had a little too much time on their hands. Uh, That's but, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's generally the same. I mean, obviously with, uh, character work, um, especially for games, you know, it's, it's helpful to have more direction, mm-hmm. um, just cause you know, you're, you're, you don't really have the context of what's going on. Yeah. So when at least if they can direct you towards how this character is supposed to be, you know, I'm trying to like, how am I saying this? I'm sounding very vague right now. It's all very vague. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you know, that that's another thing is when we do get auditions, a lot of times there isn't a lot of context. So, right. you know, I'll, I'll read for a commercial spot and they'll direct it one way and they'll be like, you know, we want something conversational, kind of flat, a little dry, you know, something like you're talking to your best friend. So you read this thing and then you see it on TV and it's like, you know, all over the place. Yeah. With like, I love the holidays. And you're like, what? <laughs> you know sorry language (laughs) oh no no all right (laughs) yeah feel free swear away um (laughs) in so you've you've been able to play uh characters both male and female um you know uh also animals fantasy characters um all sorts of different things are there any roles that you had in your career that stick out with you that like you either might either think fondly back upon or like wish you could could forget (laughs) oh wow um i mean there have definitely been there's a lot of the fond there's a lot of fond characters there there have been some gigs i did uh just say that i apologize because i didn't know if it was our end or your end we've been having some internet uh problems around here um and i kind of wanted to just get back into it you were just about to talk about um some of the roles that you might be thinking fondly back upon Oh, right. Yes. First, I was bitching. <laughs> okay, good. Yes. <laughs> I was bitching about the, the roles that are, you know. Um, yeah, I was just saying there's a big difference between, like, you know, doing medical or corporate narration uh-huh. uh, as compared to, like, you know. The, I mean, there are people who get into voiceover to strictly do just commercial work and narrate, you know, the kind of right. more serious, like, narration I personally, uh, it's all about animation, uh, character work. Yeah. Um, so let's see, probably one of the, uh, biggest moments early on in my career, uh, was booking the voice of Rudolph for, for the Aflac commercials. Yeah, I've done, a, yeah. I've done Rudolph for Aflac and for, um, AT&T. So like the old, you know, Rankin Bass Rudolph, oh, yeah. you know, love. Um, so that was one of those moments where it was like, you know, oh my God, cause that's, you know, again, one of the characters that I grew up with just, uh, thinking maybe I'll be able to do that one day. And right. there I was getting, you know, in a studio doing this voice and, you know, getting paid. Wow. Um, and that's gotta uh, be incredible too, because you're going after a role that obviously they're looking for someone who can emulate that that character you know you're not creating a character or it's a brand new thing or something like that it's you know like you said like the original you know stop motion rudolph with that voice is which you completely nailed oh yeah i would have never known it was somebody else that was incredible (laughs) thank you thanks uh again (laughs) i watched i paid attention i mean me and my sister used to do bart simpson's another voice uh that i i got paid to do uh an episode really yeah, I did an episode of Portlandia um, where Matt Groening, actually. Uh, did you guys watch Portlandia at all? Are you familiar? I've caught it a little bit, but I'm, I, I'm not, like, up to date on it. So I must have missed this episode. But please continue. Well, it's, I mean, it's a, a, one of the characters that from the show that they was taking Matt Groening to uh, court uh-huh. because he claimed that he was the one that created Bart Simpson. And, I mean, it's just this... You know, it was just this episode, a funny little short um, right. episode. Um, but there was this human Bart Simpson, and uh, they needed someone to dub the voice of Bart to this human <laughs> talking in the courtroom. And voila, that was me. So that was another moment of like, oh, my God. That's so cool. You know? <laughs> That's really yeah. cool. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if, if, if Nancy's ever heard 
you do I work. Know. That that's pretty neat. Like I'm I'm a humongous Simpsons fan. He has Simpsons everything. It's really yeah. I, I, oh wow. Cool. Yeah, I, it like, hurts my brain. I was a fan <laughs> from I was a fan from the almond the almond shorts, and you know I'm still a fan to this day. I I think it's an incredible, I not only incredible show, but just the amount of voice talent that's on it is it, it's that lightning in a bottle. You will we'll probably never see that again with with animation. Right. It's, totally, uh, it's incredible. I love and it, and it's yeah. still going, right? And it's still going, it's incredible. Still yeah, going. It blows yeah. my mind. What season are they on now? Twenty eight or twenty nine oh or something. God. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Holy crap. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's it's insane. Well, and, and the actors on that show, like you were saying, like the fact that each of them, except I think, um, oh God, I'm totally spacing on the woman who does Lisa Simpson. I don't Here's know Lee how Smith. many. Yeah, I. Uh, I don't know if she does as many voices, but most of them, you know, carry the weight of like, you know, f- at least at least four god. different characters. Oh my god, yeah. Uh, between um, between Hank Azaria and um, uh, Dan Castellaneta, uh, I think like that's a third of the show. Yeah, like, exactly. it's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah, that's that's kind of the ultimate. That's my ultimate dream. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to be, you know, doing animation, ongoing series. Um, you know, well, and that's, and that'll bring me to my, you know, fondest of fond characters. I, I kind of have that experience with Clementine and right. the Walking well, Dead, because uh, you know she's she's been around for a while, and I've yeah, I've, I've gotten to spend a lot of time with her, and now we're gonna do a fourth and final season, which um, is awesome. Have you guys started working on that yet? No. No. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, um. But I they, mean. Let's, oh, sorry. Oh, no. Let's, let's talk a little bit about, like you said, like it's been around for a while. It started in 2012. Um, yeah. And I'm very curious from a voice acting side on a game like this, because this game, especially for any of our listeners out there who don't know about the Telltale, the Walking Dead game, it is an episodic video game where you're basically playing as different characters, but all of the choices in the game affect, directly affect how the game progresses. Um, and that can even mean that you're going to kill a character or, or save a character or, or all sorts of stuff Which that I'm not going to give Which leaves a lot away. of room for doing a lot of different lines. That's what, I'm, that's what I yes. wanted to ask you. How, <laughs> how much is it to actually record for something like this because like you said like you're recording you know voiceover for a commercial or something they have a couple pages of copy for you and you know you do it and that's it like this is to me this sounds like it must be a mountain of work is that the case it it is um which is uh great yeah oh yeah (laughs) more time in the studio but um no it's a it's a huge difference um from being a non-playable character to the playable character, uh, right. but with tell, yeah, with Telltale Games and this choose your own adventure style, um, it's. I'm trying to think, give you an example. Like, um, I think for for like each episode, for one episode with Clementine as the playable character, it was probably at least four four hour recording sessions. Wow. For, to just you know, do the main script. Right. Um, but then there's always rewrites and pickups and, uh, yeah, it's a lot of work, you know, and we're going, we're going through the lines. It's not like, okay, let's record, you know, the sassy Clementine version first. Like you're doing those lines like bam, bam, bam. Right. So it's actually a really cool, uh, acting workout for me. Cause I get to just switch on a dime, uh, the reactions and, uh, go through, uh, so it's it is it's definitely a lot of work compared to you know a story that's already been written out and you know most games that I've worked on it's just one recording session and right. you're done. Um, so this is I mean it's more than an animated series you know oh I my do God, yeah. <laughs> you know you you have your lines you say them and you're gone so yeah it's a uh, it's a lot of work um, but it's just so well written and it's just such an engaging story that. I mean, I can't, I can't explain it enough to people of, of how much of a joy it is to get into the studio and, and record this game. It has uh, truly just been a major highlight of, of my career. That's awesome. Um, and it's also cool because it's not like 
where some games sequels come out and it's the same playable character and maybe some time has passed but i mean and i'm thinking of games like let's throw games out there like assassin's creed or god of war or something where you're the same character you know but it's still the same kind of feel to it your character of clementine from the first game to now has actually grown older and you know has become a different character and I have to commend you as a voice actress of how you tackle that as well because you can hear the way that, you know, in the first game, which actually I just started playing and I'm loving. Um, nice. In that first game, you know, it is this little girl that along with the rest of the characters in the game is really coming to terms with, oh crap, you know, the world has went to shit and there's zombies everywhere. And now with the, 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 the last installment, you know, you are t- attacking that character as, you know, someone who's a little bit more hardened and a little bit has has seen some shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it, yeah it's, it's been a crazy transition. I mean, uh, I mean, it's, uh, again, I have to give it to the writers mm-hmm. on the fact that they, they really nailed down the script as far as uh, just having it. Uh, it's been, they're amazing. It's amazing, amazing work, amazing writing. But yeah, to start as such a little, tiny, innocent kid that is going through, yeah, <laughs> like Hell. A, a apocalypse. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And it had to be very realistic. They were auditioning actual children for this role because wow. this is a very, as you know, fans of The Walking Dead, we all know, this is, it's very serious content. It's, mm, yeah. It, couldn't be like a, a cartoony like oh I, that's totally an adult doing that voice so right yeah um it was uh you know but the, the content is very serious and 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 hard and painful and you know i think ultimately <laughs> being an adult you're able to conjure up those horrible feelings more than a kid would be able to do oh, and for sure um, and were you, did you happen to be a fan of either the comics or the television show before you got this gig? Yeah, I, uh, was, was, and am still, uh, already totally sucked into the show. I haven't yeah. read the comics yet. Um, I think it was, oh God, I think season two had just finished or it was in season two. It was somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was already a fan of the show. So when I saw that Telltale was, uh, you know, going to do this, do this game, I was just like, oh, holy shit, like I need to be involved. I don't care if I'm like a random, you know, zombie number five in the background. Right. Yeah. Um, I just I really wanted to be a part. And thank you, by the way, I need to go back. Thank you for uh, your um, comments, your of, of acknowledging my growth as Clementine. That's oh, yeah. very it's very kind of you. I've you know, a lot of heart went into that. Well, you can tell, and like I said, it's not like you are getting to play the same character, but nothing's really changed. It's just the amount of stuff, and like I said, I just started playing the first game, and I'm loving it, but I've been following the Telltale series, and as it came out, because I'm a fan of The Walking Dead as well, you know, and and I kind of follow along with all that kind of stuff, and uh, it's just so interesting to me. It always was an interesting game to me, and I just never had the time to really sit down and, like, play it, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to be talking to freaking Clementine. I better sit down and actually <laughs> manipulate her to do some stuff. And, uh, yeah. um, but it's a time commitment. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's because it's episodic. You have to like, really like lock in to like dedicate your hour and a half or two yep. hours yeah. to get through each episode. So it's, uh, yeah. And, and because of the, this work with the game, you're now wrapped up into everything walking dead, including, uh, the the walking dead conventions the the walker yeah. stalker conventions which is great um can you talk a little bit about like how, how many conventions do you go to what are they like when you go to them like what's your favorite part can you talk about the conventions a little bit yeah i you know it's all very humbling um i you know before the walking dead the game before the game came out and you know just totally went wackadoo crazy right popular i mean it it just i mean that first year it was like it took home over 100 game of the year awards you know i'm i was winning awards and you know getting nominated for baftas i was like i didn't even know this existed this this (laughs) is fucking crazy yeah um 
And, uh, you know, you're, as a voice actor, you're pretty anonymous. Although nowadays, you know, voice actors are a big part of conventions, totally. um, which is really cool. Yeah. But, you know, uh, I'm trying to think. What was it? I forgot. Was Walker Stalker was one of the first conventions I went to, honestly. Um, I think I'd done a couple before that, but it's surreal. It's still surreal. I'm sitting there at a table. I'm, I'm getting to meet people who are super psyched on this character that I also love in a game I also love. And I'm looking around and, you know, I'm surrounded by actors that I'm like geeking out over or I love or admire. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's really just a surreal experience. Um, to be involved with the convention scene and, uh, and you know, Walker stalker definitely has, I mean, I love all the conventions. I love all the people I get to meet and, and I'm honored to go to any and all of them. But with Walker stalker, I've been going to them since the very first one. And, uh, you know, it's just like family. Yeah. They, they, and they run that convention so well. And it's, I don't know. It's just I've I've grown to, you know, make a lot of really really good friends that I consider family at this point from from going to these Walker Stalker conventions and uh, so it's it's just it's it's cool. I mean, I definitely like I said though still have moments where I'm on a panel and I'm like looking around and I'm like, what am I doing here? Yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> it's so just surreal, fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just. Uh, it's it's again one of those moments in life like we were talking about earlier where you get yourself into a place where you're just like i can't believe that this awesomeness has happened and uh yeah but uh yeah shout out to to fan fest and everybody who works yeah. over there that's the the first that thing that jeff and i noticed when we went to the walker starter convention and we go to a lot of like comic conventions and conventions in general that how well this this uh, uh this convention ran and how friendly everybody was and it is yeah. it's one giant family and they all take yeah. care of each other and if you're a part of that they're taking care of you as much as you could ever want and it's it's really such an amazing experience they do such a good job and i would say anybody even if you're only a mild fan of walking dead you need to go to this convention you need to find one near you and go to it because it is just okay. it's incredible it's an incredible experience they do such a good job and that also goes to the the celebrities that are there because like you said you're there you're experiencing this you're, you're enjoying it and you're in a good mood and so are all the other celebrities they're everybody's right. in a great mood because everybody's being taken care of and <laughs> yeah it's, and it makes this like it's like fantasy camp that's what it felt yeah. like like jeff and i went to fantasy yeah. camp for a weekend and the whole time we're like we can't believe this is happening this is just amazing yeah yeah it's it really you know i think a lot of back to this whole manifesting thing but yeah. you know walker stalker started with you know, um, uh, people who connected and found each other yeah. because of a common love and a common, you know, a, a common love of, uh, I think, well, I think Lost was also involved, if, yes. I, if I'm correct. I know yeah. James Frazier <laughs> is a huge fan. But, you know, it literally uh, started with people who were all super psyched about the same thing and and, you know, went for it. And we're like, hey, let's start a convention. And by golly, did they? Yeah. Um, I mean, I can't believe where it's at now. It's 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 huge, and it couldn't have happened to the you know the nicest, most better people ever. Wow, I should yeah. be an English teacher. The most better <laughs> people on the face of the planet. But um, yeah, I'm I'm I just uh, yeah I I'm so psyched for them. Um, and the success that they've they've gotten from this because it's just super well deserved. I mean, yeah, yeah, definitely. How many of these do you go to a year? Would you say? Uh, la, la, la. well, um, hmm. Walker Stalkers this year. Gosh, I don't know. I think I did four or five. It depends. I I feel like a couple years ago it might have been a, a few more. Mm -hmm. But yeah, at least four or five. Um, and I was able to go to London this year. They brought me to London, awesome. which was amazing. Um. You know, because the people in the UK have been like, we want to meet Clementine. And I'm like, you know, well, I'm trying, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's kind of as a voice actor, it's, you know, conventions, uh, you know, you're, you know, 
well, people aren't going to recognize you. You know, that's, right. that's, that's exactly that's exactly the, the, the nitty gritty of it. But right. you, the people that you get to deal with are the most hardcore loving fans because, exactly. yeah, you just get the coolest people. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I have the coolest fans. Um, well, it, and it is. And, you know, I it, it's, you know. And again, I think since there is so much animation and there's so many shows and games are so cinematic now that voiceover really is actually, a, you know, developing this whole new scene around it. And people really are wanting to meet uh, the actors who do these voices. And I mean, I would have been the same way. Oh, my God, if I could have, you know, stood in line to talk with June Foray, you know, oh, my God, yeah. you, know, it's awesome. you know, I would have, you know, freaked out like or Nancy Cartwright. Oh, yeah. I lose my shit if i met her uh i mean i i would keep it cool but, you know inside <laughs> oh my god this yeah. is like admire this person so i mean it is definitely more of a, a niche as far as uh the fandom but um and that's why you know going to walker stalker and other conventions is 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 just so cool like i don't know i i love it any opportunity to meet the people who have made it possible for me uh you know is an amazing experience. That's awesome. Um, so, yeah. So the one question we always ask everybody, um, and uh, I'm very curious always about the answer, is uh, you, you're, you're out there, you know, you've had obviously this character of Clementine for since 2012 now, but you're out there still, you know, getting work and doing all this, these different roles. What fuels you to keep getting out there and to keep uh, going on auditions and keep getting jobs? What, what fuels you to keep doing this? Ah, oh, gosh, I think it's just it's it's an absolute love for the work I do. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, uh, you know, there are, it's it's can be scary. You're a self-employed human being, you know, when an actor's not working, an actor's not working. And right. you're like, oh, my God, I'm not working. You know, and you have to keep, you know, visualizing only success and you have to keep visualizing only, you know, things only getting better more work coming in Mm -hmm. um it's just it's forward motion in this industry with what i do it's forward motion or you're stopped in your tracks and then it can get scary (laughs) and then you're like oh god what do i do so you know my fuel is the fact that i'm i i sound like a broken record but again it's the gratitude to be doing what i'm doing um, and, and a love for it. I was talking with someone the other day about like retirement or something. And I was just like, God, I don't even like, I forgot about that. Like, I don't mm-hmm. even see or retire. I don't say like, well, I'm going to turn 70 and go live in Albuquerque. I don't, I don't know why you go live in right, Albuquerque. Right. It's a lovely place. I'm sure. <laughs> it's all right. It's not, <laughs> not the retirement it's, village I was thinking of. It's not that great. It's pretty flat. And <laughs> okay. Everything's really separated and there's some weird crime. It's not that great. Oh, okay. Well, then, let's say Taos or uh, yeah. Santa Fe. There all, we right. Go. all right. There we go. There you go. But I don't know. I just, you Sorry, know, I don't Albuquerque. Even... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going to retire there. Um, I just, uh, you know, I don't even visualize that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it'll happen eventually in life, but, uh, my, my fuel is just the fact that I, I thrive on what I do and I feel very grateful, especially being in a position where, uh, you know, when I, before I got my start of being in a position of just like, you know, what the hell am I doing with my life? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know? So it's just, it's at this point after so many years of being able to, to, to have this, to have this gig, it is truly love that fuels me forward. That's, yeah. That's, that's really awesome. And sometimes it can, it, I don't know, for me, it can be tricky to keep visualization on track because sometimes when things are going really well, I, w- I always expect them not to eventually. And it's right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Is there a trick that you use to like stay positive and maintain a good vision? That's so funny because I'm making it sound like, oh yeah, man, I'm like perfect at this. Yeah. I'm talking about every day. I just, I just a uh, brick of gold just landed in my hand. <laughs> no, no. God, not good. Uh, no, there. Is, yeah, it's it's. Let me tell you the other side of that. You know, I I have a lot of anxiety. You know, I totally have gone through bouts in my career of having you know panic attacks and anxiety and and, and being in bad headspace. 
So I am definitely, it's work. Yeah. It's work. Yeah. It, it's actually, you know, I'm going to change that word right now. It's, it's a practice. Yes. Yeah. And I, I have that too. You know, I definitely, I'll be walking down the street and thinking like, oh, I haven't booked anything in, you know, the last couple of weeks. And, you know, oh shit, you know, yeah. the sky is falling, the sky is falling. Yeah. Well, um, you know, you wouldn't want advice from somebody who was perfect. You you want advice from that so, from that somebody <laughs> who struggles just like you do. You know, yeah. for the the people who go through the same things that you do, and to hear that, you know, you also deal with the same things, and you're all you're also able to to maintain visualization. I feel like gives me a little bit of hope. Yeah, I just you know, I guess. Uh what I do when the sky starts falling is I, I mean, I just start the simple, simplest thing. I start, uh, I'm grateful for my dog. I'm grateful for the apartment I live in. I am grateful for the fact that I, you know, have a car. I just start, if, if even if it's really difficult and you're in just the worst space, just find the littlest things or biggest things you're grateful for. And I just start like counting sheep. I just start doing a list of that and it kind of snaps you snaps your brain out of its pattern of doom and despair and the end of the world yeah because yeah. you're, you're recognizing success and i feel like that puts you in the headspace to be able to take on success in the future right right and allow yourself to feel like shit you know allow yeah yourself that's okay to too thoughts just have them flow through you and get them out and you know move forward but that's what yeah, coffee's all- for yeah, and have a cup of Death Wish coffee. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, truly, though, I mean, yeah, we, we all, are, you know, I definitely am not immune to to having horrible days or, you know, feeling scared or, you know, um, it's practice. Yeah. It's just daily practice. I think that's so great. And I think you nailed it when you said it's just, you just got to keep on moving forward. Even yeah. when even when it, you feel like that's impossible, it doesn't matter. You just put your head down and keep on moving forward. Right. And uh, speaking of moving forward, um, like we touched upon a little bit in the beginning, um, but to bring it full circle, uh, the Telltale, The Walking Dead, the final chapter is going to be the final one. Um, yeah. That's going to be coming out. <laughs> Go figure. And uh, I just wanted to ask, is there um, anything you're hoping for 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 Clementine, um, uh, this this time around. Well, always with every season, I hope they don't kill her. Yeah. <laughs> um, I because I just you know even, I mean this is gonna be super crazy, bittersweet, sad. Uh, I don't know. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be oh. tough. There's yeah. part of me that's actually like really looking forward to seeing what they're gonna do for her final season and then there's like the oh man like right i don't want this to end um i don't think they'll kill her that's my <laughs> hope is they don't kill her she's it's almost too cliche or yeah. and if they did it would have to be the most amazing thing ever right uh like the most glorious of you know deaths right ever you know like uh what's 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 the movie with the gladiator you know yeah. something at the end where you're just like oh, okay i get it um, you know, Clementine has, I mean, she's a huge part of, uh, of the Walking Dead universe, Definitely. you know, she's a big part of, uh, Skybound at this part. She's, you know, her character is, uh, well loved and, and this is just me. I don't have any insight. I don't know nothing about nothing, but you know, I mean, there could be potential that, they skybound would maybe even want to carry on her character somehow. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'd love so, her. I'd love to see her um pop up in the in the comics. I, I know. I, I think that'd be really cool. Or even on the show. You know? I, how, how, that'd cool be crazy. Would, how cool would that be if she popped up on the show? That would be that would be amazing. That would be the official probably end of me voicing her. <laughs> maybe yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I I was like saying maybe they could uh I was just telling someone recently if that ever happened we could just motion capture that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like the tiger, Ezekiel's tiger is, right. you know, come on. so we'll just have a motion. I'll be the golem. Yes. Of the cat. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Run around in a green suit, little balls all over you. Yeah, love it. Totally. It's a dream. <laughs> I did re- actually really, I mean, I got to do that once and I was like, I want to do this every day of my <laughs> life. Oh, uh, what'd you do that um, for? Uh, it was for some 
thing for Oculus. I don't know if I'm supposed to say it. Oh, back, okay. But, oh, that's neat, but it though. Was that's a, neat. Oh, it was totally, it was so much fun. It's like a, a really cool mix of voice acting meets on-camera work. Because, I mean, it's a it's a legitimate, you know, film. You know, I mean, you're it's an all-day shoot. Right. Where it's like eight hours of, I don't know, it's so much fun. I, I And I think that's the future. Yeah. The, of the ultimate future of, of games is, you know, a lot of the companies now, especially the big triple A games can afford it. But, um, you know, I think that's the future. Yeah. yeah. I think um, once that technology settles in, it's not only the future for games, it, it, it could be the future for movies. I mean, the, the, the graphics are getting so real now. Yeah. That it's crazy. It's going to be hard to distinguish, uh, real from virtual. Yeah. And, right. and we'll be able to have timeless characters. That can live right. on and not age, yeah, and just right. just be motion capture at this point. It's pretty nuts. Pretty nuts. It's totally nuts, and it's gotten like crazy. I have a friend who um, works uh, McKinnis and Scott, and they do uh, uh, you know VR stuff, and they've oh god, I'm now I'm totally blanking on exactly what it is, but they are able to do like facial capture. I mean, it just looks so real. You cannot crazy. tell. I mean, to the pores on the skin. Wow. Wow. Uh, yeah, look them up. McKenna Scott, they, they've done some really cool stuff if you Definitely. want to see examples of that. But, um, yeah, that's uh, the future. That so, oh, so, yeah, I guess, you know, if Clementine makes it onto the show by that time, hopefully. Um, yeah. I'll be motion captured in. That's yeah, there we go. So, well, I hope you get probably not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do. I do kind of hope that uh, you know this isn't going to be the end for you and Clementine, and and hopefully uh, we'll be able to see that character and that whole maybe, air, air maybe of the an world. An animated series. An animated oh series. Oh my maybe. god, yeah. that's my dream. If Skybound were, because you know they they are Skybound's gotten big. Yeah. Oh, there could be like, look at me. Hmm, I need to talk to them. Get a show on, like, get, didn't they just do a deal with like Amazon or? Get Kirkman on the phone. Yeah, someone get me Kirkman. Dude, let me pitch this to you. Yeah. Show starring Clementine. Animation. Uh, yeah, that would be ultimate. That would just be dream come true all over the place. But, um,. Who knows? We'll Who see. Knows? Again, visualize. You got to yeah, visualize. Just say it out into the world, like you said, you know, and, and then it'll, it'll come true. Um, I want to thank you so much for taking time to talk with us on the show. Um, and just so all of our listeners can keep up with you, obviously, you know, go out and get the Telltale, the Walking Dead games and that kind of stuff. But to keep up with you personally, is there any social media that you frequent that that people can follow you? Yes, I'm best when it comes to Twitter, okay. uh, which is funny because that was my most, I resisted that one. I was like, I'll never be on Twitter. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I like Twitter. Um, <laughs> it's uh, at Melly Hutch, M-E-L-Y-H-U-T-C-H. All right. Uh, and you can also find me on Facebook, which I'm really horrible at, but it's Melissa Hutchison V-O. And uh, I'm Melly Hutchison on Instagram awesome. as well. So, awesome. um, so yeah. And and thank you guys for having me. This has been Fueled by Deathcast, a Deathwish Coffee Company podcast production. Thanks for listening. <laughs>